Hi there, I'm Graham Lewis and in this short video we're going to explore the function um, x to the power one third plus x squared and use calculus to classify the uh, critical points and other points of inflection and see what this function has to show us. It's an exciting function, it has some interesting properties and I think you'll enjoy it and it's a good overview of using calculus to sketch some functions. So firstly, let's find the critical points. So remember at a critical point either the first derivative is zero or it's undefined. So let's find the first derivative. So the first derivative using our derivative rule, the third comes down, knock power off, and uh, x squared goes to 2x. So we can see straight away when we look at that first derivative, we've got a critical point at x equals zero. Because at x equals zero, the first derivative is clearly undefined because of this x to the power minus two thirds. x to the power minus two thirds is one over x to the two thirds. So of course the denominator is zero because x to the power minus two thirds is one over x to the two thirds. And when you sub x equals zero and you divide it by zero, so it's undefined. So we've also got another critical point solving equal to zero. So let's do the algebra, which is a little bit tricky. So one third x to the minus two thirds plus two x, I need to solve it equal to zero. So I'm actually going to take out a third x to the minus two thirds as a factor. So that's one. Clearly I need a six because six times a third is the two. And also I need x and whatever power I put in here, when I times it by x to the minus two thirds, I want it to be one. So clearly that's five thirds because five thirds add two thirds is equal to three thirds and that's my one. So there I've got it equal to zero. This bit is the undefined bit, so I'll set this bracket equal to zero. So setting that bracket equal to zero gives me x to the power five thirds equals minus one sixth. Now five thirds is a one to one function, so I can undo it by raising both sides to the power three fifths. So I'll raise both sides to the power three fifths since uh, 5 thirds is a 1 to 1 function and we'll get another critical point. So x would equal um, minus 0 0.341. Now of course this is when the first derivative is 0 so this could be a local maximum. It could be a local minimum. Or of course it could be a horizontal point of inflection and that could go two ways couldn't it it could go concave down and concavity changes to concave up or concave up and concavity changes to concave down so it could be one of those two so to classify it let's have a look at the second derivative and use the second derivative test so we need to find the second derivative so let's remind ourselves what we got when we did the first derivative the first derivative was a third x to the minus two thirds plus two x. So let's differentiate this badger and see what we get. So we've got a third, the minus two thirds comes down, knock power off, so minus five thirds plus, and that's a two. So I've got minus two ninths, x to the power minus five thirds plus two. Notice something straight away, that the second derivative when x is zero is undefined. So that zero, that critical point x equals zero is popping up again. So f uh, double prime f double dash zero is undefined and that was one of our critical points. We'll discuss that one later. Let's do our second derivative test at where the one where we know we've got a horizontal either um, point of inflection or a local max or a local min. So the point we need to sub in if you remember was minus th point three four one. So let's sub in minus 0 0.341 and let's see what it tells us. So we get 3.335 if you do that on your calculator bigger than zero. Because the second derivative is bigger than zero at the point and around the point the function is concave up. Because it's concave up it must be a local minimum because at a local minimum, it's always concave up through there. So we know at minus 0.341, so at minus 0.341, and f of minus 0.341, we'll work that out later, 
we have a local minimum. That's great. Okay, so moving on. We now want to look at this second derivative, which is minus 2 ninths x to the minus 5 thirds plus 2. So let's just write that down again. So let's have a look at that second derivative, which was minus 2 ninths x to the power minus 5 thirds plus 2. Because we know that at a, we might have some other points of inflections that are not horizontal. Uh, obviously, we've got a local minimum. We don't have any look. We don't have any horizontal points of inflections. We don't have any local max. We just have one local minimum uh, at the moment. At other points of inflection, at uh, at any point of inflection, we know. So at any point of inflection, we know that either one of two things happens. Either the second derivative is equal to zero, or uh, we know that the second derivative is undefined. Now be careful. What we don't know is it going backwards. If the second derivative is zero, that doesn't mean it's a point of inflection. Think of y equals x to the power 4. y equals x to the power 4, the second derivative is 12x squared. And so that's obviously 0, 0. But y equals x to the 4 has a minimum. So if the second derivative is 0, it could be a, a maximum, a local maximum, a local minimum, or a point of inflection. But if it is a point of inflection, then one of these two things is true, which is really important there. So looking at my second derivative, we can see clearly straight away, again at 0, it's undefined. So that point's popping up again, f, uh, double dash of 0 is undefined. So we're going to have to look after that at some point, x equals 0. I'll leave that to the end. Um, we can see that because clearly x to the minus 5 thirds equals 1 over x to the 5 thirds. And so if we sub in x equals 0, we get 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. So we need to solve our second derivative equal to 0 again. So I want to solve minus 2 ninths x to the power minus 5 thirds plus 2 equals to 0. Like before, we're going to solve the second derivative equal to 0. So we're going to solve minus 2 ninths x to the power minus 5 thirds plus 2 is 0. I'm going to take out the factor again, minus 2 ninths x to the power minus 5 thirds. So I'd have a 1, be a minus. Um, it would be, uh, to get the, the 2 there, I need um, a 9 because 9 times 2 ninths is 2. And clearly, I want x to the power 5 thirds because x to the power 5 thirds times x to the power minus 5 thirds is x to the power 0, and that's 1. And I want to solve that equal to 0. So this is our undefined bit. So again, we want to solve this equal to 0, this bracket here. So we want to solve 1 minus 9x to the power 5 thirds equal to 0. So I get x to the power 5 thirds equals 1 ninth. As before, 5 thirds is a 1 to 1 function, so I can raise both sides to the 3 fifths to get the answer. Um, so I get x equals 1 ninth to the 3 fifths, and I just use my... Okay, so I've just used my calculator to get that, and I get a number 0.26758. So we know we've got something happening at 0.26758. So let's just have a think what's happening at 0.26758. Okay, so what we know, we know that 0 0.26758, uh, the second derivative is 0, because that's how we found the point. I've actually subbed 0 0.26758 into the slope function and got a value of 0 0.26. Now, that's important because it tells me what the slope is at the function. It's very, very slightly positive. So actually, what we know is that this is a, an oblique point of inflection, um, an oblique point of inflection. I don't know which way it goes yet. We're going to put that together in a minute. It, the concavity could change from concave up to concave down that way, or it could be um, uh, the other way as well. Okay, uh, so it could be could be obviously concave down to concave up. So those are the two ways. I don't know wait, which one it is yet. Okay, so what we've got then is we've got an oblique point of inflection. Now we're going to have to tackle this x equals 0 and think about what's happening there. So what we know is that when x is 0, y is 0. So the interesting point is at 0, 0. Uh, we also know that f 
prime of x or f dash of s uh, 0 is 0 and f double prime of 0. Sorry, sorry, it's not 0, it's undefined. f prime of 0 is undefined and f double prime of 0 is undefined. So because the slope is undefined, we know that it's um, a vertical slope. And so what we've got here is a vertical point of inflection, like this. So it could be concave up, then concave down, or it could be the other way around, of course, like that. We'll know when we put the graph together. So what we have here at x equals 0, 0 is an, a vertical point of inflection because the, the slope function is undefined there, which is very interesting. Um, because we know that that point is not a maximum min or a horizontal point of inflection. So we can now put this all together. Let's see what we've got for our whole function. Okay, so I know we've got the minimum at minus 0.341 and I sub that in and got a y value of minus 0.582, a vertical point of inflection at 0, 0, and similarly an oblique point of inflection is shown. And we also know that as x goes to infinity, if we look at our function, um, f of x equals x to the third plus x squared, uh, then clearly y is going to go to infinity. And equally, as x goes to minus infinity, we know that um, uh, y is going to go to minus infinity because the x squared will take over. And um, Sorry, positive infinity because the x squared will take over. Right, so we now can put this all together and sketch this. So what we have is we come down and we've got the minimum point. We've got a vertical point of inflection at 0, 0. And then we've got an oblique point of inflection later on and shooting up to infinity. So here's my local minimum. Here's my uh, vertical point of inflection. And here was my oblique point of inflection. Let's just write down those three points. The minimum here was at uh, minus 0.341 comma minus 0.5. 582, uh, 0, 0 was our uh, vertical point of inflection, our oblique point of inflection was at 0 0.26758 and 0.716. And there we have it. Uh, this was a really interesting function. Let's just um, see what this looks like on graphing technology. So if you have a look here, I've just drawn these on Desmos, and uh, if you look at the orange curve, you can see we've got our minimum, our vertical point of inflection, and our oblique point of inflection, as we got, which is nice. Um, now, if we look at the uh, the purple curve, that's our uh, first derivative function, and you can see that obviously where the first derivative is zero, it corresponds to our local minimum. And you can see where the slope is undefined with this vertical asymptote, we've got our vertical point of inflection there as well. Also, one thing to note is obviously when the black curve, uh, which is our second derivative function, clearly when the second derivative function is positive, it means that the slope function, which is the purple function, is increasing so the y values are going up you can see that really clearly when the black function is positive um, the um, purple function is going up which means that the original function is concave up like that then you can see where the black function is negative which is just down here here that means obviously that when it's negative the purple function the slope function is going down here you can see that and obviously, if the slope function is decreasing, that means it's concave down. So you can see in this little region here, this little region where the uh, the black curve is negative, you can see that our original function is concave down until we get to that point of inflection there. After that point of inflection, we can see there that the uh, um, it's changing there to uh, uh, concave up. So there we have it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please make any suggestions or comments and I hope that helped. It's a really interesting function.